Hey everyone. So intentions basically uh, make an overview of our last uh, work on front end. Uh, me and Merlin uh, had some upgrades on the on the front end, so we have some pull requests open, and I would like to show uh, our job. Uh, and of course, walk through the the board, maybe assign some new issues or create new ones. That would be my my intentions. Distractions? Uh, not today. I will pass to Merlin. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, so uh, yeah, I would like uh, like just uh, I'd say that Fabio just to show what we have done, um, and uh, maybe I have some question about uh, some image uh, image stuff, but we'll uh, see that later. And um, I have no no distraction here. So it's okay. <laughs> um, I can. Um, I'll pass to Vitor. And oh, hey guys, how are you doing? <laughs> wow. Uh, for intentions, I'm really excited for this call because uh, Santi did a great work in a lot of stuff that you did, and I did a few things too. So I think we have a lot of progress, and I think maybe in one week we can tackle this down. So so I'm pretty excited with it. And distractions, my university classes began like yesterday. So I'm a little bit overwhelmed trying to balance everything. Like time management is okay, but you always end up a little bit overwhelmed. Uh, I will pass it to Danny. Hello, uh, I'm just here to check in around the narrative updates and communication with Radical Exchange. I can only stay for the first half hour of this meeting. So just getting that in there and don't know who to pass it to. Marco? Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot. Guys, can you hear me well? Hear me? Okay, okay. I switched to the new headphones, so okay. Uh, intentions, yeah, basically getting updates, seeing how we're progressing, uh, closing issues possibly on the final release. And as for distractions, no distractions at this point. I'm all good. And we can move forward. Yeah, yeah let's go. Well, well, since you have to leave first, Danny, why don't you start off with Radical Exchange? Yeah, um, uh, after I heard from you about Fanny's message, I had a chat with her. She's working to schedule um, a specific review and feedback with Glenn and somebody else. She's going to give me a, an appointment for that. But in the meantime, I jumped in. They have, they have their call tomorrow. So I went ahead and filled out, they, they, have, they have a cool little format. They uh, request agenda topics through a form. So you sign up to say you're gonna be on the call and what you wanna talk about or you want somebody else to talk about. So I'd love to just give the simulator presentation on the call tomorrow uh, to the community, letting them know it's coming um, and then have the meeting with the, the specific radical exchange folks to. Uh, to get any final narrative changes. Based on that, I decided not to not to dive in and pour a lot of time into hacking on some specific changes. Um, I think it's good enough to share with them and I don't want to ask you guys to make changes and then change it again. <laughs> uh, so that's the update. I can give you more information after their call tomorrow. Um, but for now, I'd rather not make a bunch. I, I don't want to submit issues to you guys without their feedback next. Uh, thank you for That's jumping. In. Thank you for jumping on that so well. Uh, I'm so glad that you're giving the presentation tomorrow. That is going to be awesome. Yeah, I've shared it with them before, um, and then they or they said get back to us when there's something to look at and review. So that's the time. Awesome. Uh, hey, Santi. Uh, you, uh, you're good on, I think we can move on from radical exchange, right? And, uh, um, but maybe Santi, if you want to just say any intentions, distractions for the call. Yeah. Hi everyone. Uh, yeah, my intentions for today's call is to sync with everyone to see how the, everything with, uh, upcoming, uh, public release and yeah, and right now we have no distractions. Great, then let's uh, let's pass it to uh, uh, maybe 
Fabio and Merlin, like tag team for front end updates? Yeah, sure. Um, you want to start? Um, yeah, I just uh, add a, a model. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I, I should uh, maybe run something. Is it um, you merge it, right, uh, Fabio? So mm, to, on, to develop the branch, uh, yeah. So it should be on, uh, somebody has a link to um, yeah. the development branch on Netlify. And so it's just a, a model uh, so that uh, the, the user is aware that if he go back to a previous level during uh, uh, the setting of the parameters. If he goes to a previous uh, level, then all parameters set previously will be reset. So it's just a, a model to, so, so the, the user is aware of that. And um, some typos uh, also are fixed in the code and, and that's it. Uh, I didn't remember because I wasn't, uh, there yesterday, uh, yesterday, <laughs> last week, uh, of what we've, uh, you discussed, but, uh, uh, the main work that I've done, it, it was two, one and a half weeks ago on the mobile stuff. So to realign all the stuff when you are on mobile. So yeah, uh, it was, uh, mostly, uh, mobile improvements. And uh, I think uh, I pass to Fabio because I didn't have the time to review its uh, the next pull request, but uh, I'll check uh, uh, in maybe a few hours. And yeah, and I have a question, but uh, maybe Fabio, you can uh, continue and I, I ask my question uh, later. Okay, sure. I will share my screen. Uh, let me see. So can you see? Yes. Yes. Okay. Sure. So I was assigned to these issues. Um, this one about the Google Pay Google Pay uh, input, I didn't work because I really don't know how to make it work. So I was focusing on working on this five. So this one give a preview card to the website uh, I'm running here locally. I have this extension that shows me the preview card. So it's working. I also sent to Griff yesterday. So it's showing nicely on Telegram, WhatsApp, Facebook, etc. So this one is okay. Let me see the other ones. So we have a few improvements on level one. Um, here I styled the generic model. So Marco made a model for the exit. So I styled the buttons. It's uh, the same as he did here. I can show you, let me see. So yeah. We had this before and Marco made this one and I implement the, the styles here. So it's working as well. And about this one, uh, I made a little uh, fix it, fixes here because uh, before uh, when I was selecting like uh, four or five, it was showing a lot of hatchers. So now we have basically three transactions here. So it's, uh, better, but I think we can improve uh, a little bit as well. Okay, so these three ones I show you. Oh, uh, I swapped the, the image as Danny asked, I think is level zero three. So we have this image here now, a new one. 
it's different from other tra trans transitions. And the last one about the good and bad future, I can walk through the outcome. And now we have here three buttons for share the score on Twitter, Facebook, and Telegram. So it's working, I can click here. And we have the, the text that Danny, Danny wrote. Oh, load, load. Oh yeah, it's working. <laughs> so I just changed one of the social media. So I replace uh, LinkedIn with Telegram because LinkedIn doesn't allow us to share a text, just a link. So I think oh, it was not so good. I, I will replace with to, uh, Telegram because it allows me to like log in and share the text and the link uh, as well. One thing. Fabio, like instead of removing or replacing with Telegram, maybe we can add LinkedIn, regardless of that you can't pass that uh, message, like default message, and let just let user to, to enter their message. Yeah, of course. Uh, I, I just replace it. We just want to spread it, 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 want to spread it all over the place. Hmm? Yeah, it would be easier. Just like just copy and paste and and, and change the, the icon here. Yeah, I can make it. I mean, we can leave the Telegram, but just add LinkedIn as well, you know, in case someone wants to share it over there. I do that sometimes. I mean, uh, and we just want to spread it, you know, wider we can, so. Okay, sure. I will make it. Thanks. Amazing updates. So, thanks a lot. So thanks. Um, so these are the, the issues that I worked. Uh, I already uh, moved them to review what's going on here. Please. So they are here. So it's already on review. Um, once uh, Merlin reviewed them, then we can close the issues. Right? So that is it. Amazing. And Merlin, you said you had, I mean, that's a lot of updates. Uh, Merlin, did you say you had some issues or some questions? Um, yeah, uh, it's it's about uh, the reformat image uh, to the progressive uh, format, and uh, I, I I find a tool to um, uh, convert um, normal JPEG to progressive JPEG, but it doesn't seems to work because uh, Fabio uh, told me that on low network it doesn't work, so he pointed me to. Um, uh, to a document, but it's more um, like a trick. Like on the the file he shows me, uh, it's they have um, like like a low quality image that they load really uh, e easily. And when the high quality image is loaded, then uh, it uh, uh, swipe the image. In fact, it's uh, like that. It works, and but it's just a trick to have um, a likely, likely um, progressive uh, image rendering. But uh, I think that uh, it's not what we want. Mm, so I'll try to find another tool to to convert uh, normal JPEG to progressive JPEG. Because I, I think the one I used uh, is not uh, really great. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I need to to do some over tests. Um, but, but if anybody has uh, a solution, uh, you can send me the tool and just to convert the image and uh, yeah, I, I'll t t test it on on low network. I have one, I'll send it in the Telegram chat. Does anyone else have any other image converters that they like? I feel like Marco might have some secrets there. Yeah, <laughs> like Photoshop uh, parameters. Put my hand, not right now. <laughs> Oh, so you're asking, uh, so hold on. So you're, you're asking uh, the, like how much you should, you want to compress the image or you're asking for a tool uh, that does that for you? No, it's just a tool to have a, um, a progressive image 
that works because I used one, it compressed a little bit, but the 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 goal is not to compress uh, the image, but so that the rendering is like it's uh, like um, you're loading the entire image, but uh, some pixels are not loading. Um, can send you a link. Maybe it's. Uh, I think it's you that's in the link on the issue. So uh, yeah, uh, what I understood Merlin to say was that he's converting JPEG into progressive JPEG and it's not working because the tool he has sucks. Do you have, do you know of any other better tools? Ah, okay. So you're not, not actually doing that. Do you want to graphic or something like convert them you um, broke up pretty bad for me sorry i didn't <laughs> understand well yeah yeah I, I broke up a little bit so so you are you're not doing that in the back end actually you're you want to use a graphic design tool to convert the current images to progressive images yeah that's it ah okay 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 I, i'll look into that Okay. And uh, uh, if you look on the Telegram channel, there's David that sends, uh, not David, no, no, it's Nay. Uh, his uh, username is uh, an handle, Telegram handle is Crypto Dog. <laughs> but I don't know <laughs> who is he, but he, he sends a link uh, that I have. Uh, already read and um, talking about progressive repeg and I don't know it should work but it seems like not <laughs> it's okay we uh, sounds like Marco will be on it uh, and we'll we'll help you find a, a good tool okay cool Thanks, thank you okay cool uh, well then let's dive into the, the great work you guys on the front end like in the last two weeks major progress major so it looks really nice uh vitor do you want to give you you are hinting at some amazing things that have been happening on the back end too okay sure uh well uh, a few oh weeks actually weeks ago. really 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 quick fabio merlin for tomorrow before danny leaves did danny already leave um should she be using the developed version or the the mainnet version. I think the develop. Yeah, uh, development branch. Yeah, I can send um, her the link on Telegram. Yeah, just maybe. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, please send me the correct link to use. That would be terrible. <laughs> What's best for <laughs> demonstrations? <laughs> and let's let's you know, let's just make sure that whatever link we tell her to use, that link is stable tomorrow. Okay. 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 Sorry, Victor. Um, yeah, the call is at eleven a.m. my time, Central. So that's uh, twelve o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Thank you, guys. Have fun. Thank you, Danny. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Sorry about the interruption, Vitor. Uh, no worries. Take it away, back end. Okay. Uh, so, like a few weeks ago, we were having uh, the max packs, like max hatchers and proposals. We were having like execution time of around two minutes. And then we created that uh, that issue on uh, mitigate the network edges because we had a, a hypothesis that the problem wasn't there. Then after that, I changed that filtering, like filtering the a few proposals and the calculation uh, conviction calculating, and this like increase fifteen uh, percent, increase the made fifteen percent faster. And then just to get sure that the, the hypothesis made sense, that the problem was in the network edges and network X, like in the graph itself, uh, I made just a quick uh, modification in the model, like locally, just to track like the time in each in each policy in each partial, partial state of the day block so just to get sure that it was making sense and then the result was let me get my screen uh the 
result was. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah, we see it. Can you? Okay. So, oh, sorry. This the result was this. Like each uh, each number in here is on policy, and then the in the x and the i is like the time. So you can see that we have mainly four policies that take almost our, of our time or our, our execution time. Uh, so basically, this is like generation generation of participants. This is, if I don't remember, I think it's like proposals. This is like people staking in the proposals, and this is like conviction calculating. So basically the problem was in there just to get sure that it was making sense. And then like my first idea to fix it was like, like today every person have a affinity to a proposal. The, my idea was like to, and the, this affinity can go like from zero to one. So my idea actually can go more than that, but anyway, like, uh, uh, my idea was like filtering. So like now not, not, like you only have this edge if you have more than something. Like in this case, I was filtering by uh, like the affinity could be like, uh, this would be a, an edge if the affinity were like more than 0 0.5 or 0 0.25, but like this changes the, the outputs and can like uh, create unexpected uh, results. So like, yeah, this is like token price, but like it changes in everything because I imagine that if you have less, uh, if you have less edges, like when a proposals get approved or active, you have less sentiment into the into them. So changes ch change things in general. So uh, Santi came up with a better solution. He, I think he will show later after I talk. And then like he just fixed this. Like he made a, just optimizations on the way it was before, so it doesn't need to change any result and have uh, great results. So this is a great thing. So I let him do this part. Uh, next part that I had to do was integration tests, just like to get sure that uh, if we have some inputs in the site, they will always have like bad results and good inputs, good results. Even like we're using random seed, but just like this is more a test to get sure that if we change something in the code, like the scars will be the same. So j just for a test. So I have the PR on this, so I just waiting for for it to be for it to be approved. Uh, maybe Santi can review it. And then the other part that I had was the readme, and this I think you guys can help me with. I was thinking like uh, I had an issue on the readme, just for like getting people there, like devs to. I imagine that they have the public release, people go in there, then people wanna see how, how can I hack this and, and contribute and do stuff like that. And my idea was just like make it more more in a better way. <laughs> I don't know how to say that, but like make it more friendly. I don't know, I added this image, but I don't know if it's good. I just got it from there. And I did not add a text. So maybe yeah, Danny, maybe it can talk to Danny before, about it, but I don't know if you should have like many, maybe introduction, like quick, quick text uh, explaining what is a common stack and come simulator or anyway. And then just change a few things in here. Like these, I, I will remove these because this is showing that uh, old better front end. But I, I was a little bit, I don't know exactly how to do this because now our front end is not in this uh, repo. So maybe the front end guys can help me with it. Like, I don't know, like, how to make people to play with the front end here. And yeah, I just added in here, like how to run it in CLI. So now people can just do what we do, like run it, run the parameters, run the testings and play with it. So my main doubt in here is like, I think the, the part of running stuff in CLI, it's fine. Like people can test it and work. Maybe my, my, main, my main concern is like, how do you present this, like more images? Uh, narrative and maybe i don't know like after we do the public release will we have like a kind of a maintenance stuff like how like a a tab of how to contribute stuff like that or it will be like close like those are my main questions i think that that's that's it I don't know if you guys know uh, that sounds great. I mean, I, I think it's just three issues a front end person, a back end person uh, update their, their part of the readme. And then we pass it to our, a content person, Lauren or Danny, to just make sure that it, it sounds nice. Okay. Right. And, and I think it'll be done. Thank you for pointing it out. It's a 
great call. We need to update the readme. Uh, I, I think we can uh, have the same for the front end because now you just have uh, yarn, uh, uh, yarn and stuff like that. But uh, I think we can add some some content like uh, for the uh, readme for the front end. I think it should, could be good. cool. Should we just have the same readme for both repos and they, they uh, basically say the same thing or no? Well, maybe, for, maybe for the content, like the descriptions of the common simulator and maybe have uh, an alternative like a focus for the simulator and a focus on the front end and then for the code and stuff like that, I think uh, we should have uh, our proper uh, content as it's yeah, different. I agree, like I imagine content in here, like stuff for the front end and then like in here, we have this block just cause it's like back end, but it would be other stuff in front end. But okay, I think it's like, it's well pointed out. We can like do this in the next week. Uh, uh, just one other stuff that I have that is like not in backend exactly, but I, I, the image is a little bit lame. But I, I was thinking about like the idea on the the score stuff, like from these. Uh, can you guys see the, the the Google Doc? Okay, like this idea for metrics and stuff. And I was looking at a few issues made by the users. That let me let me check which one was it. That like it was not quite clear what was the score. And this made me think a little bit on it. Like, I don't remember which one is this. I think it's maybe this one that was maybe saying that, okay, I got this car, but I don't know. Uh, it's not this one, it's the other. Anyway, but like the, the main idea was I got this car and it tells me to improve, but I don't know what to improve. So I, I think you're, you're mute, muted, Ruth. I think it's issue 120. Okay. Improve the final score and failure success metrics for next release? No. Oh, no. I guess no. not. I, I don't know. It wasn't here. But but you, you know what the... I'm talking about. I think it was that uh, you were seeing like streamline history. Oh, it is. Click on this one. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think. Like, I just get it was saying it's hard to tell uh, what is a good and or bad future. Yeah, yeah. Like playing the game, it felt like there was this connect between start premise and the RxC community. Yeah, and here, like, add some context in the final game score. Like, hard to tell what is good or bad and how to improve the score. And what I was th thinking about it, that like mainly when you're playing games, you end up like getting an overall score, but you have like some stats bars, be, be, uh, like where you know where to improve. Like, and we have like nine metrics. And I was thinking maybe we should like put these metrics, but in a really compact way for like stats, stats bars. So like we have our max is like a little bit more than a hundred. So you can see like clearly where you go better or lower. We don't need to do like a lot of uh, data is not like real, really polluted and I will show the image just to get to get shared but it's pretty lame image on Pinterest but this is what, what I was thinking like imagine you have like nine for this and then like if you have the max score on like I don't know like sentiment you go oh my sentiment's good but my token price is bad something like that and because I don't know if, if it fits in the game but I was thinking like uh, even like we they're playing with the game if we get a if we have a good score we can we can like intuitively think on what we want well, but it's not that clear. But I don't know if it makes sense. It's just a suggestion. But I think for me, that's it. I don't know if anyone have any thoughts on that. Marco, maybe. I, so I, 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 I like the idea. Um, I guess part of this is also the education piece. We don't want to make it too easy because then they're not challenged to figure it out. Uh, so there, it's it's a, but I do really like that that uh, the the things that you just showed there. Maybe for some of these things that we're about to add, 
you know, like, here's like how you did on some of these things. We don't, I, in, in some ways, we want them to have to look at the charts and think. And I know oh, like, okay. that's like anti UX in some ways, but uh, yeah. No, you're right, you're right. We also want them to actually read the intro and everything else, like the whole introduction and, you know, take it slower from there because I, you know, I would assume people would just like click through first and, you know, get to the juicy part. But you don't want to do that, right? So this is like not like I'm just going to jump into that and do whatever, click around and get results and I'm going to get it. No, you're not going to get it. You have to read it or you have to think about it. So like, you know, that's that's part of the UX, I think. So, um, so yeah, I mean, great feedback, but I'm not sure we should you know, jump on it right away. So, well, we, well yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. there are some pieces. I mean, we need that graph that pops up an example of a good graph. For everything and and i think that text could be improved to include some of the metrics as opposed to just saying what the funding pool is maybe we say in there like a good funding pool has these qualities you know yeah those yeah, those are sense. the minor details that i also yeah that that i originally also included like the uh the glossary you know the example chart and all that kind of stuff we can you know enhance the UX and you know further explain people like um, yeah yeah but th thanks for the explanation I think that you guys said it makes sense I think for me that's it I think Santi has a lot of show oh Santi uh, that's a, hey a... uh, well I don't have too much things to show because everything needs like a live work is pure, pure cold but uh, yeah, I can give you like a brief overview. Um, well, so basically, uh, I don't know if you, Peter, can show again the uh, chart where you show the time spent by each state update individual or partial state updates. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I, I, after Peter sh uh, shared me to this uh, graph, and so I um, kind of focus on these four uh, partial state updates uh, and yeah it's focused on optimizing uh, the how the model was querying the the, the, the the network so for example um, in uh, the partial state update number four where you create new proposals um, and you yeah when a new proposal is being uh, posted let's say uh, right now it's time dependent on the and the amount of participants that are in the network because when a new proposal is created, this proposal gets interest, let's say, from all the participants that are in the commons at the mo at that moment. So that's one of the bottlenecks, and um, that I'm gonna sh show you um, an approach that I that, that I didn't uh, push to the code, but I, I, I will show you later. So. I leave it that for later, and I focus on more, more on um, um, tackling uh, this partial state update number one, which is when a new participant is added to the network, and this uh, number twelve and thirteen, which are for which focus on uh, the voting, voting on proposals, and I think thirteen is in conviction calculation. Yeah. So um, I ended up uh, optimizing, as I said before, the how the the model query the graph. So I ended up uh, decreasing the execution time um, for I think it was like around thirty seconds for the uh, yeah for the um, the that uh, use case where the the. Number of parameters, the number of participants is 150, I think, and number of proposals, initial proposals are 50. So that's like our um, extreme case, which takes longer. Um, yeah, so um, that's one of our uh, improvements in terms of execution time that I did. But then I also I started to focus on the special state of the number four, and I introduced these um, sub uh, instead of assigning. Uh, or getting, yeah, of matching a proposal to all the participants. I start to subsample the total amount of participants that are in the um, in the network at that moment. So, um, you know, yeah, instead of having, the, if at that moment, let's say there are uh, 100 participants, I just get a, a 
random number that will ask, that will get like I don't know maybe forty or thirty or sometimes it just gets like interest of two only two participants, and yeah, and then the the um, the simulation execu the execution time of the simulation drops uh, dr dramatically. It got a, re uh, a really good improvement, but the thing is that um, the results change ch also changes dramatically. So um, I'm gonna share you now the screen. Could you stop sharing, Victor? And just a quick, so the number one was adding new users. Number 12 was voting on proposals. Number four is the affinity updates to proposals. No, so number one is adding participants. Number four is adding new proposals. And number oh, 12 okay. is uh, voting on proposals. And number uh, 13 is uh, conviction calculation. Okay. Um, yeah. Just to check, you guys do know about C profile, right? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I have heard about that, but we, I'm, we're not using that at this moment. I think Peter implemented his own um, benchmarking, let's say, uh, uh, implementation. Yeah. Okay. Just and I'm not so there. sure. I don't know, Peter, how do you implement it? Did you include like timings, timers in each partial yeah, step? Yeah, yeah I, I, yeah, I added as a seed variable the time. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's, it's better to use the lower level thing like C profile, then, then it'll show you exactly like which part it is. Maybe it's using the data frame in this way. Uh, oops, uh, whoops, wrong project. We're not using data frames in this one. <laughs> uh, maybe it's this uh, particular function in network X, uh, that's slow mm -hmm. and it can pinpoint that for you. Yeah. Oh, we'll give a look at this. Hmm. Also, if uh, it's still not, uh, uh, Benjamin Schultz uh, told me about his project called RadCat, which is like CAD-CAD compatible, but with a Rust backend. So you might want to oh. check that out too. Uh, ben S C H Z A slash Radcad. GitHub dot com. Uh, maybe we, maybe we, uh, yeah. I mean, I love Ben. In fact, I I put it in our uh, notes here. But maybe we keep going on the backend updates. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So um, when I implemented these, uh, well, if I leave lift up the, these um, uh, participant to proposal uh, subsampling. I ended up for, 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 this, um, for this simulation with these parameters, we had uh, 150 hatches and only 10 proposals. I ended up getting like an execution time of around 27 seconds. And if I include the subsampling, the execution time lowers to 20 seconds. But the thing is that if I include that change in the cause, for example, this, this is the results in terms of funding pool, token price, and sentiment without the subsampling. So as you can see, the sentiment and token price is um, a bit correlated. Um, but if I include the subsampling, the, change, the results are changes uh, really, um, are really different in this case, for example, I run uh, this uh, A-B testing or parameter sweep and all the results got like, in terms of token price, for example, all the, the final price is always got, um, drops dramatically in all, in all the results, uh, also for the sentiment. So I started playing with these uh, sentiment um, config parameters that we have in the config file. And uh, if I, um, decrease this sentiment decay. This is a, a config parameter that we have uh, set. Uh, it's, it's a constant value. Uh, if I decrease this, this config, config uh, parameter by a factor of 10, these are the results, for example. But in, in, if I do that uh, for, um, for this simulation, the sentiment is, uh, stops being correlated to the token price. For example, the token price starts to always to go up 
but the sentiment is not correlated at all. Yeah, maybe it's a good trend in terms of sentiment. Yeah, but the token price is getting always high, never goes uh, down or yeah below the the let's say to the initial price. It's like always have this this exact same pattern that the, the, the graph I am showing you right now. Um, then I also um, disable this uh, partial state update where is in charge that is in charge of uh, doing a sentiment decay of on in all participants. I uh, completely disable it and these are the results for example. So uh, in, in this case also the token price also goes really up uh, but the sentiment is I think uh, a bit um, let's say a bit correlated and a bit similar to the results that we had uh, before without the subsampling. Yeah, so that's some it's, uh, some of the analysis that I did. So uh, my question is here is that if we should try to um, include that subsampling in the for the uh, public release or maybe we should leave it for later. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I just wanted to hear your, your thoughts on, on this. Because right now, yeah, so for right now, yeah, we are having decreased the time or the edge um, um, overhead for uh, about around uh, 30 seconds less in terms of execution time. Yeah. Yeah, it's really tough because I also, it sort of feels like if there was a soft sampling, like a soft sampling is also more accurate as a simulation. Not everyone is going to see every new proposal when it comes out, like for mm -hmm. sure, right? Like only some people would see a new proposal. So it feels like an act, it actually improves the, the realism of the, of the model. Uh, but man, that, these outcomes are really, I guess, you know, we did all this like tweaking to get the outcomes to look a certain, look like they're supposed to look. Mm -hmm. And and this obviously it screws it all up. So I, I don't know. I, in the end, I think it's it's your call on understanding how much work it would have to take to kind of shimmy the outcomes to be back to the way they want. Um, disabling sentiment decay is really sad. I wonder if we could just lower it so that it's still there. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, the um, maybe we work. can increase the pressure on selling. Because uh, yeah, for this is yeah. when when I decrease the sentiment decay by a factor of ten, I got these results, but the token price is still really high. I don't know if it should always be go up. And are what the time steps represent days? Yeah, I just run it. I just run this locally, so I had to run it for only uh, yeah. one year. Yeah. Does it does it have a vesting uh, length? still applied because uh, I'm surprised it doesn't have more of that speculative pump at the beginning that Vitor added. Yeah, uh, I think your vesting is in 30 days since I'm not mistaken. Try try increasing the vesting length as well and just see see what we mm -hmm. can get if vesting is more like three months. Oh, in there is 10. Uh, I saw in your group. I think it's 10. It's 10? We, are, we are using like 120. Oh yeah, yeah. In the like vesting ADP, no, mm -hmm. not, not this one. Uh, line thirty-five. Yeah, this one. So make that like what a hundred or one hundred and twenty. We are using one hundred twenty. That's the default on the front end. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's a. Yeah, I mean, I, I obviously I I would love to, man. It would be really nice to get thirty seconds shaved off the CAD CAD model time. I mean, that's a that's a huge win. It's a huge win. Uh, I guess the for, but I don't know if it's the right move. It depends on uh, your guesses or your estimation on how we can get the the graphs to fit the model again. Mm -hmm. that was, yeah, I think we need to play a bit with the with the parameters and config params. Yeah, to see if that we can, um, yeah, tweak it out and get like um, stop getting like these uh, extreme values in, for example, in terms of token price. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Vitor? Mm. 
Yeah, I don't know because uh, now we are like when we vote, like for our voting or not voting, like on proposals and stuff. We already expect like uh, uh, that people need a, a number of affinity. Like they expect, I think at least like zero point five of affinity. And the distribution of affinity is made in a way that we have a lot of people with a really low affinity and really small number of people with high affinity and like end up that these people with high affinity like decide a lot on the on the voting stuff and if you only like decrease the number of people getting affinity you have even lower people with high affinity and this might affect in an unwanted way so yeah what i did was like more trying to just filter in people with low affinity but didn't like increase uh, like it's a symptom as well but to, it, it, anyway it still doesn't have these results like these speed results i really think that maybe doing that way we will have a, a lot of more of work like testing stuff and retesting stuff and i think it's a good way may probably make the simulation better but I'm afraid that this might take a long time to like yep. read doing stuff. Yeah. So I don't know, food for thought, Santi. And um, I, in the end, I think it is your call on uh, how, how much it'll take to readjust. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but I think uh, we only have 10 minutes left. Oh my God, eight minutes left. So uh, we're, we're, I think we need to jump into the board really quick and uh, check on some of these issues. Uh, Marco, if you want to dry, I can share screen if you don't have great bandwidth for that, but uh, I don't know, you you uh, adjusted these issues last time. Do you, are you interested in driving? Yeah, I could do that. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, before I move on, I just want to ask, uh, there's a, there's a GitHub called CSIM Frontend, and then the second one is called Common Simulator. So which one are we using, and are these actually connected? Common Simulator is the back end, and the other is the front. And we're not using CUDE Ah, yeah, 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 uh -huh, okay. Right? Yeah. Could, so CUDE Cat is basically out. All right, hold on a second. So we're on the common simulator, right? No. Yeah. Oh, you got a Zen Hub. Hold on a second. I need to switch to, oh yeah, I have it here as well. Common simulator and CoolCAD is out. All right. Yeah, yeah, got it. Do you want me to share my screen or, or will you be sharing yours? All you, man, you can definitely share. It's easier usually, right. I wasn't sure if your bandwidth was there. Just a sec, where is that? I put the link in Telegram. Share. All right, you see my screen? Yeah. Great. Let me just move this over here. Uh, so what do we got? So we got items in, the, in progress. Where do we want to start? Um, sprint backlog, reformatting images. Merlin, I, I sent you a couple of uh, Figma plugins. I tested one of them right now. Uh, so we can play around with those. Uh, is Merlin still on the call? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I see. I think it's like more uh, for just compress images not uh, formatting to a progressive yeah. images, but there are plenty of free tools. I I'll try um, uh, from my side, um, some tools and see what's it the best. Uh, well, yeah. The, okay. Uh, the best tool. Oh, got it. So, All right. Um, one, yeah, anything we want to add? No. No. 
All right. Um, one thing, uh, Fabio, this issue with uh, autofill with Google Pay kind of thing. Um, I don't think like, I'm not sure if you thought about this already, but I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards closing this issue. I'm not sure how you feel about that. Yeah, me too, because uh, like the input has a text type. So I don't know what else I could do. You to, said like, enough, I'm closing. Force. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I know, I know, we discussed it last time, so I just, yeah, I, I heard enough. <laughs> uh, improving the final score, I guess this is something you guys have been discussing right now. Uh, so I think it's still on. Um, Santi and Vito, right? Yeah, we needed to fine tune a few things on limiting, like they're not limited, each metric. Uh, this is, however, in pro this is in progress right now. Yeah, so we yeah. can actually move it out in progress. Yeah, hold on a second, where's that now? Final score, so it's like in progress. Uh, integration tests, uh, this is to be done yet, right? Yeah, it's in there, but when I when I merge the EPR, it will be closed automatically, so it's in progress. Yeah, actually, it's for a review. All right, so this one is review. Uh, interesting information. I'm, I think I'm blocking this one for, for moving it into in progress or or not. Yeah, you guys, uh, Mark, go ahead. Yeah, because it's more like voting and deciding what's going on right now. Did you, did you, Vitor, uh, put your remarks in the Google Sheet? Well, actually, like the mine will be for the colors, like, but I can put my, my votes in there. But uh, and Griffin, you? My deal was. I think Sorry. Griffin sent it. Yeah, I did. And yeah, Vitor did as well. His his are the colors. His his yeses are green. His okay. green navies are yeah. I, I'm gonna th yeah. I'm gonna take this off. So I'm the last one here. So I need to just you know crunch the data over there and see what we can do with that. So it's basically um, up to me now. And I will move it in progress once I get to this one. Um, okay, so that's like in progress. Uh, that's the spring backlog. Uh, product backlog, fix readme, uh, fix readme, that's Vitor. Uh, uh, it's in progress. It's already in progress. Uh, All right. I'm going to make, a, that's cool. I'm gonna make that this. into an epic right now and, and uh, divide out of the work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, cool. Now, these are mainly enhancements. Like if user goes back a level, ask to confirm. Uh, Merlin, to do you think you could be working review. on this one? Uh, it's already done. It's uh, on review. Sorry. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So it's QA. All right. All right. Great. Oh, I love it. You're awesome. Um, yeah, make intro slide pause on tap. Like this is like a mobile. Again, this is like enhancement, uh, I guess. I guess Merlin, once you're finished with the image progressive uh, thing, you can get on this one. Uh, say, uh, I don't know, maybe next week, or do you think you can get this done this week as well? Um, not this week. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Okay, I, I will move this like to sprint backlog for, for the next week. So just to rehab it. Is that okay with you? Yeah. All right. Um, this one. Uh, the think about graph axis on the reserve page. Uh, I've been thinking, but <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. Do you need some support from, from other people on the call? In fact, it's how oh, we arrange the y axis. Uh, do we start from zero or from uh, or fit the graph? For now, I think. We feed the graph. Oh, I don't. I don't know. I don't remember. But I. I, I, um, I don't know if we we need to keep this issue or if. Yeah. Well, hmm. we wait for feed uh, for user feedback uh, about the graph. I don't know. Because one one way or uh, the other. 
we we there's no clear answer whether it's uh, right to do that or not. Both have um, have um, assets and yeah. I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's really All right. useful to keep it. Got it. Griff, uh, since you created this issue, do you think we can close this issue for now and then wait for, for uh, user feedback? Uh, yeah, I, I, I would put it icebox or backlog and, and not make it part of the public release if we, if, if we want user feedback. This was a question that was brought up in one of the calls. I just mm. made it during the calls. Um, and I think, I think we need to see the final yeah, we need user feedback. Yeah, got it. All right, it's top of the hour. Uh, we we cleaned up the board a little bit. Uh, we put some items in the sprint backlog. What is in the in progress? Uh, assume, assuming we're gonna have th this done this week. Uh, and then next week we have this, the stuff that is in sprint backlog uh, that's coming up for us uh, to do. So yeah, I think we're doing good there um, and any any other thoughts, questions before we call close this call? Uh, just a quick one, Fabio. Would you be down to uh, do the update for the front end README? Um, of course. I, I think I think the path would be that we just focus on getting the README good uh, in the common simulator repo, and have that be once that's done, then updating the front end repo completely. Uh, after the content people go through and then it'll be the last step. Okay, sure. Okay, cool. Thanks, guys. All That's right, all I got. cool. Um, before we close, I just want to thank a lot of uh, We're moving forward. It's looking awesome. Uh, you know, press on and, you know, see you on the next call. Thank you. See you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Great work. Bye. Bye, bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, Lauren. Oh, hey, Lauren. Oh, lost her. Hey, Craig. Thanks for coming, man. Hey, Griff. What's up? Oh, you know, just hanging out.